Hi everyone, it's our second quick read um, for someone who wants someone, someone who likes something light to listen to if you've got younger children in the family. And this week I've chosen a book that my youngest daughter loves um, and it's called The Great Dog Bottom Swap. Quite an unusual title. It was nominated for the Roald Dahl Funny Prize um, Award and it is quite amusing. And if you own a dog, this will all make sense. <coughs> So the great dog bottom swap. And inside, before the story starts, is a queue of dogs, all different breeds, holding an invitation. We cordially invite Peter Bentley and May Matsuka to write and to illustrate the admissible event of the great dog bottom swap. The day had arrived for the dog summer ball. All the dogs in the world were lined up at the hall where a sign to the door said, Now please be so kind as to keep your coat on, but remove your behind. Please hang up your bottom on one of the pegs, and remember no growling or cocking of legs. So as they went in, every pooch, dog and pup, they took off their bottoms and hung them all up. Hundreds and hundreds of pink little O's, all neatly arranged in methodical rows. What a feast the dogs had at the ball on that night. The table was quite a magnificent sight. They dined on fresh giblets and dog biscuit stew with slippers and old dug up sheep bones to chew. Then doggy chalk ices all creamy and brown and fresh puddle water to wash it all down. When the poodles had cleared all the food bowls away, it was time for some fun from the dog's cabaret. The pickies did a song in ridiculous hats and a Labrador told a rude joke about cats. Then Coco the Conjurer got a huge laugh by pretending to saw a Dalmatian in half. And now, Coco said to great woofs of applause, it's time for the dancing, so up on your paws. Look at us, says an overexcited young hound, as he whisked a fox terrier clear off the ground. Watch out, cried a sensible boxer named Clive, as the hound and the terrier started to jive. Then swirled and they twirled even faster and faster until, oh dog, catastrophe, what a disaster. The twirling was more than the Afghan could handle. He suddenly tripped and knocked over a candle, which fell on the curtains, which promptly caught fire, being old and quite cheap, sending flames even higher. Some dogs broke the rule that forbade hind leg cocking, but the fire soon spread a speed that was shocking. Don't panic, barked Clive in a great fit of passion. Let's all try to leave in an orderly fashion. But that was an order they chose to ignore as they scurried and scuttled like heck for the door. As the last dog shot out of the hall with a bark, the lights all went put and the whole place went dark. Wait a minute, said Clive to the panicking mutts. Our bottoms, our bottoms, we must save our butts. So into the cloak room they bumbled and tumbled and soon all the bottoms were hopelessly jumbled, and every dog grabbed the first bottom they saw, and fled the great fire with a bum in their paw. Luckily every dog got out alive, and no one was caught by the fire except Clive, and some others whose tails had been singed all away, which is why all those dogs have no tails to this day. And all the dog's bottoms were rescued as well. But because of the darkness, no doggy could tell whose bottom who was whose in the panic and scrum. So each dog went home with another dog's bum. And ever since then, when a pair of dogs meet in the park or in the playground, the woods or in the street, each dog gives the other dog's bottom a sniff to see if it has the particular whiff of the bottom they lost on the night of the ball when the dogs hung their bums on the hooks in the hall. The final image is, is all the dogs sniffing to find their bottom back. Hope you enjoyed the story. <laughs>